So getting back into the outside uh, features of this camera. We talked about the battery, NPF 970s or 750s, the same batteries you've been using on your Sony top lights, on your Sony camcorders from the past. You can use them right with this, right with this camera. It actually ships with a battery ready to shoot. Let's go to Jose for a second. I want to talk about audio input. This is the big one. Sure, you can shoot with a gigantic lens, like uh, a gi gigantic chip, like on a 5D or a 7D, but where are you going to plug your microphone in? You've got to buy an adapter, and you've got to worry about automatic gain control, et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's temperamental, right? It's, it's uh, difficult at best. This camera's got two XLR inputs. Jose, you looking at me right here? Input number one on the side of the camera, OK? Right there, standard XLR, just like you're used to. Input number two, it's in a little bit of a funny spot, but here we are. You reveal uh, input number two behind this little rubber, uh, rubber device, OK? So those are your audio inputs. And stay on, Jose, for a second for me, if you will, Virg. Let's get, let's get tight right here. They're not just XLR inputs, OK? They've got the important line, mic, and 48-volt phantom power switches that you're, that you're used to on the broadcast cameras. Why is that important? Well, the, the microphone that ships with the Sony NEX FS100 requires phantom power. Uh, pull out a little bit, just if you will. This guy right here, this included microphone, requires 48 volt phantom power. You can turn that on and off simply with the switch of a hardware switch, right? Pretty awesome. You can assign both input one and input two, uh, excuse me, both channels one and channels two to listen to the same input. Let's say you've only got one microphone, but you want to recreate stereo sound. That's not a problem. I'll put uh, input channel two to listen to input one the same way that channel one listens to input one. We've got automatic and manual so that we can uh, switch these guys into manual and actually dial up or down a manual audio setting for the camera. If you like it in auto, no problem. Switch them both up to auto. It's really important to have these features on the outside of your camera. You don't want to have to fumble through the menu to find a way to assign input one to be both channels one and two. Hardware switch makes it quick and easy, right? Two quick questions. All right, we got two questions coming in from the internet. Let's go to Debbie with the questions, please. How does the FS100 compare with the DSLRs for light sensitivity? OK, an excellent question. So the, the two most important factors right, regarding light sensitivity are, number one, the size of your chip, and number two, the size of your iris, uh, your, your f-stop, if you will. So on the, on the f-stop side, you'll notice you can use DSLR lenses on your cameras, uh, on the FS100. So in that, in that sense, it's, it's dead even, even heat. It's got great light sensitivity because you can open your iris up. You can stick the same lens on a DSLR that you would on this camera with an inexpensive sub $400 adapter. What about the chip size? The chip size in this camera, as we mentioned, super 35 millimeter. So it's very close to a 70, not quite as large as a 5D, right? 5D is a, a still 35 millimeter size. And uh, 7D and the FS100, super 35. So you take that still 35 and turn it sideways. Uh, excuse me. Yeah, basically, because it's a, it's a 35 millimeter on a vertical film strip versus the horizontal film strip. So the question, how does it compare? Roughly identical. Roughly identical. And the other question is, what is the, the rumor about 444 out of HDMI? All right. Let's talk, about, let's talk about the video outputs. Thank you for watching. First of all, thank you for bringing your question to us. I appreciate it. 444 is something you're going to get out of the big brother of this camera, Sony's F3. Right? So it's also a super 35 millimeter chip inside the camera, but it's a little bit more on the professional end, HDSDI. Now, its HDSDI only puts out 422 color space. Right? When you buy the $4,000 upgrade, dual link HDSDI, that's giving you 444 output. You'll still need another piece to the equation, something like a Cine deck or an SRW deck, a recorder that can actually record 444. So <laughs> the F3 without a 444 recorder in the upgrade much like the FS100. When you're, recording to, when you're recording to media inside the camera, 420 color space. When you're coming out this HDMI output, 422 color space. You cannot get 444. I don't know who started that rumor. Let's uh, go back to Debbie for a, a follow-up question. We have a comment from the internet. Douglas says that it's not correct. The FS is brighter because more of the chip is used. Well, I'm uh, Douglas. Thank you for sharing your opinion with us. If more of the chip is used and it's brighter, I, I suppose you've corrected me. Um, we'll tune in next week to your show. <laughs> okay. All right. Continuing on with the external features of the NEX FS100. So you saw where the XLRs plug in, right? Now let's talk about video coming out. Well, first let's do audio coming out right here, something a DSLR does not have, Mr. Jose. 
Headphone output, right? 1 8 inch 3.5 millimeter mini headphone output. Put it on, monitor your audio, because if you don't know what it sounds like going in, you're not going to be happy with what it sounds like when you're trying to edit. Uh, DSLRs don't have it. This one does. Fantastic. Also, next to this headphone jack is a LENC jack. LENC, L-E-N-C control. That allows you to zoom, right, and start, stop, record. Zoom and start, stop, record. Now, you don't need to purchase a third-party LENC controller. This camera actually comes with one. Here it is right here. It's, it's the zoom handle. So I can rotate this zoom handle up and down, or I can take it completely off. Why would I take it completely off and maybe replace it with another uh, LENC controller? Because when I open this up, it reveals a little slot right here. What does this slot allow for? FMU-128. That's a recording hard drive that gives you roughly 11 hours, roughly 11 hours at the highest uh, resolution recorder. So recording this camera's got two options. The FMU-128 hard drive, which goes right here behind the adjustable and removable uh, hand grip slash length controller for zooming and record start stop. Additionally, let me just get this guy back into place here. Additionally, on the back side of the camera, right here, we've got a slot to insert and eject one of two types of cards. SDHC, okay, that's um, brand agnostic. You can get uh, verbatims or transcends or Kingstons or PNYs. Goes right in this slot. Additionally, inserted into the same slot, Sony's first party Memory Stick Pro Duo cards. Memory Stick Pro Duo. So the 128 gig hard drive that goes on the side, 11, maybe 12 hours at the highest resolution, 32 gig SDHC card, three hours, 180 minutes at the highest resolution. So what is the highest resolution? The highest resolution is, on, on the one hand, it's 24 megabits per second. That's where you're going to shoot 1080, 60i, 1080, 24p, or 1080, 30p. It's called um, FX. So the NX Cam codec that you're recording has a couple of different two-letter codes that decide how many um, megabits per second you're recording. The highest megabit per second that you can record is 24, 24 megabits per second in regular 1080-60i, 30p, or 24p. Additionally, this camera gives you the option to record at 1080-60p. That's called PS. That's the two-letter code. When you're recording at 1080-60p, uh, you're recording at 28 megabits per second. So you get a little bit extra data rate out of there, a much higher frame rate. And this is really good for things like uh, slow and quick motion. Uh, you can shoot at 60p, ingest it into your editing system, and then if you wanted to do a slowdown, you've started with a very extremely high uh, uh, progressive frame rate, 60, bit, 60 frames per second in a 1920 by 1080 space. Pretty awesome.